What is up our kills and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is at least I get caught cheating. So I'm going to share my screen and we're just going to jump straight into it. Started the Olympics. Human nature always found a way to cheat in sports. Okay. When large amounts of money got in the picture in the 20th century. The temptation was too big. And sports God. cheating became a daily operation around the world. Here are the 10 athletes who thought they would get away with fraud. They got caught and humiliated instead. Michael Pineda, Heinz right. Miller. Michael Pineda okay. is a Dominican pitcher that plays for the Minnesota Twins in the MLB. I think this is where they the, the the ball can stick to their hand or something. Like he did something very similar to what Dwight Howard was doing in the NBA. Just like Dwight, it wasn't a problem that he did it, but how obvious he'd been about it. Pineda used pine tar during his time on the mound, which was illegal, but it wasn't severely penalized. By applying pine tar, the baseball would have a better grip and not lose any of its speed. And many pitchers throughout the league used pine tar. But during a game against the Red Sox in 2014, when it was especially cold and windy on the Fenway Park, Pineda decided he would need a lot of pine to be able to throw properly. So he applied a lot of it on his Jesus, it's so noticeable. Look at that, like. Jeez, it's so noticeable. Like, I know it's a sticky substance, like, and a see through, but damn, like. Like, if you're gonna put it on, put it on, like, here, under your wrist or something, maybe. And from there to the baseball, it was clear as day what he was doing, and the officials immediately threw him out. Pineda got a 10 game suspension for doing something everybody else did too. Only 10 but days, like. A little bit smarter like, not making it blatantly. No, like if you're getting a penalty, like you should get like at least, a, like, you know, a, a money ban or like ban for, no, not ban for life, but like money ban at least. Not like this, oh, 10 games during back, like. The obvious. Sammy Sosa, corked bat. In baseball, a corked bat is a specially modified baseball bat that has been filled with cork right. or other less yeah. dense substances to make the bat lighter. A lighter okay. bat gives a hitter a quicker swing and may improve the hitter's timing. In 2003, the famed okay. right fielder Sammy Sosa played a game for his Chicago Cubs Two against Tampa Bay baseball. How many and baseball shattered his bat in the first inning. No harm done. It happens all the time. The right. player just gets another bat and the game resumes. However, the plate umpire noticed pieces of cork among the shards of the shattered bat. He rightfully ejected Sosa from the game. Sosa acknowledged ownership of the bat, explaining that he occasionally used it for batting practice. Would make sense. Home run yeah. exhibitions to entertain you know, his fans. It does make sense. Baseball then confiscated and tested 76 of Sosa's right. other bats after his ejection, and, they... and all were found to be oh, clean, okay. no court. Oh, However, the crime had been committed, and Sosa still had to serve a seven-game suspension. That's not too bad. Antonio no, Margarito loaded gloves. What does this mean? I don't, I don't know anything about really boxing. Hard. Sorry. They say that they have dynamite in their hands. In the case of Mexican boxer Antonio Margarito, well, he had plaster on his hands. Before Margarito <laughs> okay. was supposed to fight Shane Mosley for the WBA welterweight title in 2009, Mosley's trainer noticed that Margarito's hands were wrapped strangely and asked for the wrap tape to be examined. The coach had a great eye and was right to be suspicious. When Margarito's hand wraps were cut off, the match officials found small knuckle pads made of plaster, which is used to make casts. The purpose of the plaster was Jesus. to add more damage to Margarito's opponent. The Mexican boxer said he was unaware of the Yeah, it's always it's never their fault, it's always the coach's fault. He knew what was going on. Bats. His coach took all the blame to himself. Margarito was did. forced to rewrap his hands and would go on to lose the fight and the title to Mosley. After go. the match, he and his coach were suspended from boxing in the United States for one year. Rosie Ruiz <laughs> making victory. Okay. Chris Rock once joked about the marathon being too long. Saying that 28 miles is a long it's drive. It's long, but like, having to run that's the, the challenge, thing. isn't it? Rosie Ruiz thought so too. But unlike Chris Rock, she wanted to win the 1980 Boston Marathon. So what do you do if you want to win the longest racing event, but don't actually want to run 28 Jesus, miles? Jesus, them sharks are Faster than everyone else? Well, you just start running close to the finish line and hope nobody notices. Rosie finished the 1980 Boston Marathon. Well, like time of 2 hours, 31 minutes, and 56 seconds which was the third fastest time ever run by a woman. Even though the victory right. time of an unknown runner raised some suspicions, she was awarded the gold medal and got celebrated like a true champion. Yeah, After a few days, like. several spectators came out and said that they saw Ruiz join the race about half a mile from the finish line <laughs> because she was never Clever. seen by the other runners and didn't appear in any photographs or footage of the race. Yeah, like they, they do a lot of that stuff there, don't they? They yeah. stripped the title away from Ruiz, but she didn't receive any further penalties. Diego Maradona, hand the of God. hand of God. One of the most yep. famous goals Maradona ever scored happened in the same game. 
during the 1986 World Cup quarterfinals against England. The second one was an absolute stunner. Yeah, you can't deny that one. the ball in his own half and dribbled past every defender in the goalkeeper. <laughs> it was a genius goal from the best player in the world. The first goal he scored in that game was also genius, but in an entirely different way. As the deflected ball was traveling yeah. through the air and into the hands of just Kings like Henry did to the Irish the for qualifying into the Euros or was it Euros or World Cup? I think it was like the 2010 World Cup. I think maybe Henry. Hold on a second. Um, I'll just hold on a second. Yeah, no, there was a. I'm checking out. There was a. There was a time ago where Henri handled handballed the game. Handballed it. Handballed. It. I'll show you the. Hold on. Um, they were playing against our. Okay. Uh, Henri and. It was like a, he handled the ball into the net to get them through to the final. And we handball. Here you go, here you go. So. What year was this for? 2000, yeah, so the 2010 we drawed with them. Great food, straight to your door. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see if they can show you, if they show you the. Okay, here you go. So for France have a free kick, they take it, Henri runs in the back and handles the ball, but I want to see, do you actually see the handball? Yeah, okay, no, well, uh, that, like half the team and then Henri is celebrating, what a nasty, 2-1, yeah, we were away, it was extra time, we were drawing one all, Um. And it was in aggregate. I think that was when we were playing the away match. Hold on, the best dash goal call. Okay, hold on. Show us the replay. Okay, hold on. Here we go. The replay is here. They're on so. Why are they calling it offside? First of all, it wasn't offside. Hold on, let's see. Get the replay down. Okay, yeah, here we go. Yeah, okay. So, pull it back just a tiny bit. Okay, so I'll show you now, right? I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to jump right into it, okay? I'm going to jump into this. This, okay, I'm going to show it up. So the ball has been crossed. Oh, no, hold on, I'll pull it back to where they were checking if it was offside or not. So here we go. So the ball comes in. There's Henri there. Look, handball! And then, yeah, handballs it. Um, and then passes it off to his colleague and they scored a goal of Vieira, I think it was. But yeah, that's a that was when same similar thing to what M Maradona did. Foot five Maradona somehow see? got it first Ooh. and sent it to But the you don't see it there, but you see it in the replay, well, I think the, the actual replay. Protested. Ref didn't see that Maradona had flicked the ball with his hand, which ultimately helped Argentina win the game. You see it in the re the replay of it. The post -game Diego cheekily said that if it really was a handball, yeah, it was a hand of God. Yeah. Lance Armstrong, steroids, of course. Pane Aqua EPO. is Italian for bread and water, and it's cycling. It's used to describe riders who recycle clean and not using PEDs. Lance Armstrong was cycling on Pane Aqua. Performing handsome drugs in one of the He was a talented rider without a doubt, but he wasn't achieving extraordinary results. After he successfully won his battle with testicular cancer, Lance they returned his, to cycling in 1998, off, but he didn't use bread and water for fuel anymore. <laughs> He had something much more potent. Lance started using erythropoietin, or EPO, EPO. in short. Yeah. EPO stimulates the production of red blood cells and enables athletes to inject... The sickening thing is he was denied it for so long and then... increases endurance, which is crucial for a sport Denied like it for so long and then Lance came out then he did cheat. Like, it's like half row, his teammates the and, most and colleagues. Like, stage bicycle races you see now. World. Even though the insiders knew he was cheating, Lance never failed a drug test, which he gladly repeated at almost every interview. He had the best doctors, who instructed him how far from a race he can use PEDs, mask positive results, avoid being detected, or avoid being tested in the first place. However, in 2013, after a massive investigation from USADA and testimony of many witnesses, including his former teammates, Armstrong was finally forced to admit he was doping throughout his career. Dwight Howard, stick him. Dwight Howard is now a role player whose NBA job is primarily to play defense I guess I'm the same thing and rebound. Ball sticks Some five hands. to ten years ago, he had a more prominent role at higher usage rate. Even though he was never a good post player, Howard would still demand the ball down low 
and to make it easier for himself to catch entry and lob passes, Dwight used Stick'em. Stick'em is an adhesive spray that enhances grip, which is pretty yeah. useful if you're trying to catch balls, and it's illegal in both the NBA and the NFL. Dwight has been using it for years, but in the game between his Rockets and the Hawks in 2016, he must have applied too much, and the other players noticed something was weird with the ball. The refs intervened, paused the game, and came over to Houston's bench, where one Stick'em can was visible, treacherously revealing why the ball was so sticky all of a sudden. The Rockets were warned to stop using the spray, but neither the team nor Howard was penalized so for the, the point, like? Tanya yeah. Harding. <gasps> the man. famous one. Tanya Harding and Nancy Carey. The lead pipe to the knee. The American figure skaters in the late 80s and early 90s. Yeah, one day I before the this. U.S. National Championship, which also served as the qualifiers for the 1994 Olympics, Nancy Kerrigan was brutally attacked after practice in Detroit. A man jumped at Kerrigan as she was heading to the locker room and beat her up with a club, attempting to break her legs. Oh, Thankfully, she only deal. suffered deep bruises and escaped with no broken bones. But still, play, she bro. was unable to participate nah. in the U.S. Nationals, where nice Harding place. took the first place and a guaranteed spot in the Olympics. After an FBI investigation into Harding's bodyguard Sean Eckhart and ex-husband Jeff Galuli, Eckhart buckled, admitted his involvement in the incident of course, and organization yeah. of the attack with the attacker Shane Stant. Harding denied her involvement at first, even though her ex-husband pleaded guilty and testified against her just a few weeks before the Olympics. Despite the scandal, there was not sufficient evidence of Harding's involvement, and she was allowed to compete in the Olympics, together with Kerrigan, who was also granted a spot. In the most anticipated skating event ever in the United States, Kerrigan took home the silver medal, while Harding finished eighth due to skating. <laughs> is a bitch. Upon uh -huh. her return, the case continued, and with testimonies mounting against her, Harding officially pleaded guilty. Of course she, she is. She lost. She received three years so. probation, a $160,000 fine, and got banned so, from skating. See, that's what they should do forever. when you're caught. Mike Tyson. Ear biting. Oh, yeah. Even though his first and most famous loss came against Buster Douglas in 1991, that happened because Mike was barely practicing for the fight. Oh, jazz. But when Tyson first fought Holyfield in 1996, Evander showed the world that Tyson could be beaten and pretty much dominated throughout the fight. Tyson immediately asked for a rematch, and he got it simply because he was the biggest star in boxing at the time. Of course. When the rematch started, Mike simply didn't have it in him, and he knew it. He didn't want to be in that ring on that night, and everything he threw, Holyfield he, had an answer he had a, he had for. Tyson a couldn't exert reason dominance though. over his opponent. Plus, he only had the stamina for about half the fight. Knowing that he would lose in the later rounds, pissed at himself and the world due to a debauched lifestyle he was leading. Mike couldn't take it anymore. He was full of hate, and he wanted to express it, but he couldn't do it with his hands like he usually did with all of his opponents. <clears throat> so, Tyson took a bite out of Evander's <clears throat> ear and Jeez. bit off a piece of it. He was immediately disqualified, which was the beginning of the end of his storied career. Tom Brady, the oh. game. Oh, yeah. In 2006, the, ball, the NFL changed the rule where the home team provided all the footballs for the game and instead enabled the away team to use their own footballs on offense. In 2014, Tom Brady used this rule to his advantage in the AFC Championship game against the Indianapolis Colts and his right. quarterback rival, Andrew Luck. While Luck was throwing balls that were per NFL rules inflated between 12.5 to 13.5 pounds per square inch, right. Tom Brady deliberately ordered for his footballs to be slightly deflated. By removing air from a football, it makes it easier to grip, throw, and catch, and thus gives an unfair advantage for the team that's using deflated Arsha. balls on offense. <laughs> After Brady threw an interception to Colts linebacker Dequell Jackson, the linebacker gave it to the equipment manager to keep as a souvenir, and that's when the trouble began. <laughs> the Colts equipment manager thought there was something weird with the ball and notified the league officials. After examination, it was determined that 11 of the 12 balls the Patriots were using in the game were deflated and averaging around 1.5 pounds of pressure less than the minimum oh, amount. Okay. The balls got reinflated at halftime, and the Patriots turned their 10-point halftime lead into a 45-7 victory and advanced oh, to the Super Bowl. Although the game was a blowout, even with all the balls equally inflated, the flake gate became a national scandal. Yeah. Brady got suspended for four games, while the Patriots were fined with millions of dollars yeah, okay, and forfeited two enough. future draft picks. Mr. Pinocchio. Let's <laughs> go. So there you have it. At least they got caught cheating. Um, in my opinion, they should... The sports that they just got bans, they should have got like at least like a personal fine, but obviously you can't do that. Um, because the teams are if they're all doing it it doesn't really make any sense but anyway i hope you're liking this video please like and subscribe peace